Today on This Week in Startups, it's our Thanksgiving special. Four, four, one, two, three, four, ask Jason's back to back to back to back. Plus, Tyler and I will be having a man bag, Merce, Satchel, off. Showdown. Showdown. It's the Satchel Showdown right now on This Week in Startups. It's all about, man. They said, money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Hello, everybody. Hello, and welcome to another This Week in Startups. It is thanks, the day after Thanksgiving. It's Black Friday. Uh, and Tyler and I are here. We've been shopping all day. Uh, we finally got back to the office, and I, I have my man bag here. I have my Merce, my satchel. Indiana Jones had one. And this is beautiful. You can, I'm going to go into all the details of what makes this the best man purse in the world. But first, I want to tell you about the best software program, uh, the best uh, web service that I use currently, that I love, MailChimp, MailChimp. Uh, this is what I send the Jason Nation newsletter out in. This is what I'm going to send the launch newsletter out in. It's an incredible piece of software. You've been hearing about it all over the place. It's free to sign up. You can send to up to 1,000 subscribers absolutely free, which let me tell you something. I was talking to one of the guys over there. They said one of their biggest issues is that because they give away that 1,000 free subscribers, you get a lot of spammers, like these Russian hackers and all this craziness going on, uh, but they still do it. They still fight the spammers so that you can try it for free uh, for up to a thousand users and you can be like me and have perfect delivery of your email newsletter. Today they actually gave me my own IP address. I don't know if that's available to everybody, but they will fight for you. They saw a tweet from somebody that said, hey, Jason Nation, this is the first time it's happened in like 15 newsletters, it was in my spam filter. They said, we're on it. They solved it. Same day, got me a new IP address, no problems. And they announced recently their $1 million integration fund. It's basically like Y Combinator. They're going to give you tens of thousands of dollars to build something awesome uh, with their API, and they've got a very sophisticated API. The only difference, they're not taking the 6%. So you're going to get free money to develop incredible applications. Go to their website, MailChimp.com, to get uh, information on how you can apply. Uh, it's a great product. Like I said, I've been using it for a couple of months now, and I'm absolutely in love with it. And it's affordable. And they've got all these crazy features. I've mentioned a bunch of them. Uh, but one of the features I like a lot right now is that I can actually see uh, the Cloud Score. This is the new feature I found. You know Cloud. I'm familiar, yeah. You're very familiar with Cloud. Cloud Score is based upon like your social network, how many yes. people follow you, how often you're retweeted. Yep. It's sort of like a popularity score. Uh, and so you it's, can. It's actually gotten a little more intricate than that. And it's kind of cool. They're starting to reveal We haven't more had Cloud on the we have, program. We need to, can we yeah. book them? Yeah. No doubt. Uh, anyway, I, I, um, you know, I'm constantly. You know, playing around in the, in the MailChimp product, and I see Cloud Score. And I'm like, oh my god, I can sort my database Cloud Score. So I say, show me everybody over 50, and there's like there's 200 people. Wow. And I say, show me everybody over 75. There's 11 people, and I look, and it's Leo Laporte, and it's Ryan Block, and Peter Rojas, right. uh, Veronica yeah. Belmont. I mean, all the most, Robert Scoble, Mike Garrington, all these other, I think Mike Garrington was on there. Anyway, all these people who are incredibly powerful uh, and who have incredible Cloud Scores, I can see who they are. And then I can email just that list. So I could just email the top 200 people on my list and say, you're going to get a free ticket to the launch conference. Or I would like wow. to invite you to dinner or whatever. Or I can wow. say, people between this cloud score and that cloud score get this email newsletter. People between this one and this one get this newsletter. So the first sentence in my newsletter could be, hey, you know, the conference is coming up. I would like to give you a half price ticket. People with a cloud score over 75. Right. People with this range, I could say, I'd like to give you a 25% discount. And everybody else, I'm going to give a 10% discount to. That was just off the top of my head, things you can do. And there's a world of possibilities at MailChimp. Please go and use it. Uh, and please say, ee, 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 ee. thank you, MailChimp. <laughs> ee, 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 ee. <laughs> well, I have this book called I Am a Monkey that yeah, I no, read to my daughter. That needs to be the, uh, the discount code. Absolutely. The disc just yeah. type in the discount code. <laughs> ee, 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 ee. <laughs> but there's this. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a book, I am a monkey, I'm a little monkey, and I read it to my daughter, and I read it with okay. monkey sounds in it, yes. and I go, e -e 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 -e, who's yeah. a monkey, and she laughs, it's very cute. Uh, anyway, uh, MailChimp, almost as cute as my, my daughter. Uh, go check it out, and I really do appreciate their support. Let's do an Ask Jason. So here I am, I am... Uh, 
picking up the call, I have Mark from the 917, which I recognize as the New York City old school cell phone exchange. Mark, are you on the line? I'm with you, Jason. That's correct. Awesome. So we're calling right from uh, uh, Brooklyn, uh, the Boogie Down Bronx, uh, Strong No, Island. I'm calling from, uh, from Manhattan. Oh, you're from Manhattan. Very nice. Uh, Manhattan. Uh, originally from Rockland County, but I, I lived in, uh, in Brooklyn for a while. Oh, we're in Brooklyn. Oh, the Berg, the Billy Berg. Okay. Uh, so tell us, you have a, a question for us. Let's hear it. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm working on a site right now. Uh, it's, it's a self-maintaining database where people are going to contribute content um, that should be entertaining um, to to other people. And uh, I was wondering about the best way to go about launching the site, because from what I understand, that's one of the biggest aspects of um, putting eyeballs on the site that's the best time to do it is during a launch. Yeah. I was wondering what your thoughts were. Yeah, so uh, launch best practices, lowercase launch. Uh, uh, so there's many different ways to launch a product, and there are some things uh, that you can – only do once. So you can only launch your company essentially once, right? I launched Mahalo and Tyler was, you were here, we planned out the launch. Yeah. So when we launched Mahalo, we said we want to, um, number one, do it on stage at a big conference. Uh, and so we picked the Wall Street Journal D conference. And the way I wound up getting us in there is I emailed uh, Walt Mossberg and I said, Walt, I, I happen to be in Washington, D.C. these two days. God's honest truth. I wasn't in Washington, D.C. those two days. I know he's in D.C. And I figure if I say I want to come visit you, that's going to put him out, right? Yeah, I'm making a trip him. just for him, right? Yeah. What if he cancels, whatever. So I just told him I happen to be in town those two days next week. Uh, I'd love to show you what I'm working on. Uh, that's it. And I know full well that he's got the Wall Street Journal D conference up, but I'm not going to ask. That would be uh, not the right way to do it. What I did do was Mark. I said I wanted to get some advice and get your feedback on it because I respect your feedback, Walt, which is the God's honest truth. Who wouldn't want Walt Mossberg's feedback on their property? I mean, that's worth a million dollars. So, uh, and I'm not kidding, it is literally worth a million dollars. So I go meet with him. He sees it. He goes, you know what? When are you going to launch this? I said, ah, the next three or four months. He goes, oh, well, you know, that's when we have the Wall Street Journal decarbs. I said, you don't say. Mm. And boom, we get it locked up. Now, you're not Jason Calacanis. Uh, so you may not have a pre-existing relationship with Walt Mossberg, but uh, you may have a calendar of events and know when these other events are occurring. Uh, and so you may know when uh, the launch conference is, February 23rd. You may know when the demo conference is. I don't suggest doing that. You have to pay. Uh, you may know when the TechCrunch 50 Disrupt conference is. Did I say TechCrunch 50 Disrupt? Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, I did. Uh, anyway, and there's other launch events that go on, or, or any other number of events, Web 2.0, South by Southwest, whatever it is. And so gotcha. I think launching at an event is awesome because there are journalists at events that have nothing to do, and they want to get coverage of something. And so if you say I'm debuting on that day, that, that's going to help, you, and you're going to get access to those journalists. Then what you want to so the way to do that is you socialize it with the, whoever's running the event, and you say, I have a new product. I think is really promising. I'd love to show it to you and get your feedback on it. Um, I'm looking for a place to launch it, and I thought it might be a good fit for your event. You can just say it outright like that. You don't have to play, you know, the sort of high-level kung fu ninja stuff that I do, because um, that's that's like a whole different Jedi level. But you'll get there. So um, if and if you get one of those shows, it's a great way to do it. Some of those shows allow you to pre-brief the press. Some don't. TechCrunch 50. We never let people pre-brief launch. I'm not. I'm going to ask people to not pre-brief. But you would post brief right after you're up on stage, show people it, have the website ready to launch, et cetera. Um, uh, have you done uh, multiple companies before, great products that people would know the name of? Or no, no, I have like a really, a really small medical device company. It's completely right. unrelated to something that might be in the, um, like, yeah. the arena yeah. you know, that you're talking about. Right, so you know, there might be, I, I have yeah, there's going to be some medical conference that goes on that you could do it there. Um, and so they're always, right. you, what you have to realize is you launching is content. That's one of the juiciest, best pieces of content for a journalist and for a conference producer. So you can leverage that. And you can say to them, hey, I would like to give you this exclusively Wall Street Journal reporter who is working in medical devices. But I would ask that if I give it to you exclusively, is there a chance we can get it in print? Because I've always wanted to show my mom myself in print. You've now said, and, and you can say, like, listen, I don't want to be a jerk about it, but... 
I've always wanted to have a press clipping from the thing. Is, is, do you think it would be qualified to be, I know it's a big deal to get in the print version of the Wall Street Journal, but would it qualify? And so you have to define what your goals are with the launch. Like, what do you want to accomplish? And uh, motivating your employees and making them feel a sense of accomplishment is a reasonable thing to do. Getting clients, getting investors, uh, partners, um, validation for you as an individual, build your own personal brand. All of those things are valid reasons. And so going to the press and saying, hey, you have something new and you're willing to give an exclusive is probably the best way to go because you don't have like some huge cachet where you can say, hey, I'm Scott Kern my next company is coming out on this day or I'm Dave Morin, I've got Path coming out, I'm going to give 10 briefs and everybody's under the same embargo. You might need to just go in and say, I'm going to do one publication. Uh, does that make sense? That does. Quick one for you. So I, you asked if I had experience in the past. So I have experience with a medical website, but I'm launching a different website. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's like a self-maintaining database. Mm -hmm. And it's not competing with a site like F My Life or Text From Last Night, but it's yeah. the same kind of premise where people are, are putting up their own unique content and, and building the site. And other people decide what the most relevant content is, which is going to rate to the top that people see. So my main goal in a big launch is to get lots of, hopefully, con you know, you said the launch is content and juicy content, but my goal would be to get a lot of people on it and a lot of people contributing and passing it around to their friends. Right. Um, so so doing the type of site it is, is there a specific conference that yeah. you'd say to shoot? Um, any, any, South by Southwest is filled with like quixotic uh, content ideas and it's a lot of media producers, so it's a, a media-based conference, so that would be a good one. Um, and there's other content conferences like blog, Blogger Con, Blog Con or whatever, and Paid content uh, has some conferences around content, and they go Malik does as well. Um, what I would do is I would put a nice, beautiful logo up with some sort of funny message about, hey, this is coming, and put a countdown clock on it, and put, uh, be the first to uh, be let into this thing, some funny sentence, put your email in, put a MailChimp sign up for them on, boom, start collecting emails, and then... My segue, Jason. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Um, and then do, at your launch, when you launch, do the 10 days of blank. So now you've extended your um, launch from a one-day event to a 10-day, where every day you're going to have one incredible story. And let's say you know some decent authors or whatever, uh, or people who are high profile with social media, get them to write them in advance. And then you can tell people, here are the 10 uh, people who are coming up and they could see maybe two days ahead, like, you know, Monday is going to be this person, Tuesday is going to be this person, so they can be excited, you know, about what's going to come. So right. in, in, in the day one, it's like, oh, here's Tyler's, you know, story about whatever, F my life. And then it says, tomorrow, Jason's going to give his. And then it says, oh, you know, the next day, Mark's going to give his. And you get this continuity, like, oh, my God, the 10 days, one's going to be funnier than the next. And maybe you can even get a celebrity in there to do something. Um, then it can become really exciting. So I like the idea of extending it a little bit. Um, and uh, always having a party is always a great thing, too. You know, having a, a cocktail party for uh, the launch of the site, if you can afford it, uh, or do a no, dr you know, uh, one hour, you know, happy hour and get a bunch of friends there, get a bunch of girls there, you know, young people. Uh, you're, based, you're based in New York, right? So, I mean, you could maybe partner with the Gawker folks or Curbed or some hip publication like that and uh, try to get a little party going. Uh, even if it's just informal with media people like uh, Young Manhattanite or something, you know, and get those guys to, to just have a little cocktail party. Um, get yourself a little coverage on the insider stuff, right? Just like opening a restaurant. But those would be my best practices. Tyler, what are your thoughts? Um, what you, is, is there some way with, I mean, I'd like to hear more about the idea. I, I like kind of shaping the ideas ar around whatever it is you have in yeah. mind. So is it, is it something that you could scandalize some use case, um, which in and of itself, so you you become the benefactor of this mini scandal, so to speak? Yeah, is there a story somebody could tell that would be so salacious that it's going to get picked up by other media? And then you write along as the platform that empowered that yeah. exchange. For example, oh, got you. Well, you know, possibly, but the posts are generally going to be anonymous. I think people would, you know, not necessarily post stuff if their identity that's was going to be That's actually happened quite a few times where Dig with the Paris Hilton thing and... Paris I, Hilton's psychic. Uh, the phone number leaked. She, yeah. she lost her psychic and got the whole address right. book was stolen. Yeah. So actually, um, Tyler, Tyler's on to something. What if you... Um, uh, Even if it's manufactured... A well, I was about to extent, say, yeah. I mean, we, it's, it's too bad we're talking about this on the air, because I was saying you could manufacture leaking somebody's salacious story, you know? Uh, but then it would be inauthentic, right, yeah, so we sort, of, we sort of... It would be inauthentic now that we've said it. 
Maybe we'd have to cut this part out of the program for your sake, Mark, because it's a, a good piece of advice. But um, another interesting thing I've seen is sort of the guerrilla tactics of, um, you know, people writing the domain name or putting stickers around town in certain strategic locations. Um, another thing, uh, here's an interesting are idea. You, are you targeting a specific subgroup of people? Is this for hipsters, journalists, media people? Mm. Who's it for? Uh, 18 to 34 year olds. Okay. Who, I, who's generally, your, anybody who's, anybody would find. I think anybody would find the content interesting, but it, you know, it's more geared towards, you know, uh, like a relatively younger crowd. I have an idea. What if you got a handwritten note in the mail and and wrote the story, like the salacious, crazy story, handwritten, and mailed it to or dropped it off by messenger? to like 25 different journalists on the day of it, like a messenger drops it off in an envelope, and it's a handwritten note, so people can be like, what the heck is this handwritten note? It might take a little time to do it, and it's the salacious story that you're talking about for your thing, and at the bo- end of the story, it says, sincerely anonymous, and dub, 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 you know, Mark site, whatever it's gonna be called. Now you've got like Page Six, or Gawker, you know, Nick Denton, or whoever, Lockhart Steele, the guys from Young Manhattanite, whatever, all these people, like, why did 25 people get a handwritten note on the same day about this crazy story? And you say, like, you know, you, it has you in it. Like, so if the person told it, like, in the first person, like, you know, you left me at the bar alone, drunk, and you should have known better. I wound up, you know, uh, puking, you know, in the bar at Balthazar, and, you know, you drank me at the table. Whatever the salacious story is, it, it could create buzz. Like, they sent those grasshoppers. Right. Those crazy kids with the with the chocolate yeah. covered grasshoppers. Grasshoppers sent out chocolate covered grasshoppers to everyone with a cloud score over seventy five or whatever. Something like that. Yeah, and it worked. You I mean, know, it, I I love you guys because I'm thinking that I'm going to call the show, yeah. and you guys are going to tell me to like hit up Twitter. You know, obviously there's social media stuff I could do, but I was still yeah. expecting an answer like get on Twitter, um, you know, email a bunch of bloggers, which I still plan on doing. I think those are good practices. Yeah, the emailing a blogger. <laughs> Well, you guys are giving me some out of the box yeah. stuff. I would have never thought of stuff on my own. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know that it applies in this case. One of the most clever sort of uses in this sense has been the uh, if if there are specific named people that are um, relevant to what your endeavor here is doing the buying the keywords for them in Google. So within, when they Google themselves, you know, you have their attention that way. That's not a bad idea. Right. Somebody did that to me. So uh, they basically bought Calacanis or something like that. So when I did my ego search, you could see it. Yeah. Um, another possibility, you know, Tyler's got that service. What was your service where the people call up and tell them they're hey, awesome? Hey, sweetheart. Hey, sweetheart. He's got that, like, you know, funny service where somebody calls live. Uh, yeah, what, I what heard if, that. I yeah. that great, by the way. What if you hired some voice actress or actor, got the numbers of all these journalists and buzz people, and called them and left a message and said, I hope you're satisfied because what you did to me I will never forgive, and I've posted it on my blog, Mark's friggin' right. blah, 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 dot com. And then you send the letter. So people will be like, whoa, this is like creepy and scary. Because it sort of feels like you're, the brand of your site's going to be a little creepy and scary and anonymous and horrific. So maybe you can add to that horrificness. How about yeah. sending the top like- 20 journalists a dead rat? That would get their attention. No, no, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't anybody ever do that and say I said to do that. But there are people who do crazy things. Like the guy, the kid from uh, Hawaii, what's his name? Who sent me the ukulele. Oh, my, yeah. Which was great. Yes. Uh, or Tom. uh, Tommy, great guy, Tommy Russo. Um, and I, and I, we remember his name. Yeah. And we remember who he is. And yeah. we, we heard his pitches. And we helped him out with some stuff. So anyway, a million different ways you can skin the cat, a million different ways to go about it. Uh, but you're going to want to stand out from the crowd. And you're going to want to invest your time. So what most people do when they try to do these things is it's like they want to do something that's small footprint and slow. and e- I'm sorry, sl- small footprint and easy for them. But then all the work's on the other person. I think you got to think about the things that would take a lot of work for you. But that would be a big benefit for the other person. That's why the handwritten letter or the phone call takes time on your part. But maybe if you just get one or two of them to tweet, man, I got this bizarre phone call at you know eight in the morning from this angry woman who knew my name and knew where I went to college and said we dated in college and she's really pissed off about it and she told her story on the site. Or if you got, you could do the real Dentony thing and take on Scientology. <laughs> I don't know what the database is used for. It's uh, right. Yeah. There are some well, people who are reactionary. Get in the shark tank with you guys. Once it gets launched, you yeah. know, I don't want to. 
Yep. You know, hey, launch, launch it at the launch conference. <laughs> launch it at the launch conference, February 23rd and 24th in San Francisco. Launch that is. Oh, I might be ready by then, Jason. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll drop you on. I'd love to, uh, to hear your ideas on my concept. Awesome. Uh, we'll talk soon, and uh, thanks for calling in. Jason, much is gracias, man. All right, peace. Bye. All right, that was a good call. He's got something interesting going on. We're going to get some creative juices going. Um, really interesting stuff. Yep. Um, you're sitting there looking at my man bag. Yeah, I can well, see the jealousy. I can see how much you're, you're, you're loathing the fact that I get to run around town in this. I mean, this is a Waterford bag. Waterford? Yeah. This is very, I'm sorry, Waterfield. 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 Uh, this, this, is, this costs a couple of hundo. Leather, distressed uh -huh. leather. Look at this fabric, like so strong, the pattern. Inside felt, like crushed, like a crushed felt in there, very soft. When you go in to get your Mi-Fi or your pen, very mm -hmm. soft kind of feel. And look at that, in there, you know, they don't have to go with that yellow lining, it's just there. That They put a beautiful pattern, very expensive. And they got a nice little zipper compartment, multiple cards. Oh, and look, whoop, oh, it fits the MacBook perfectly. Thank you, Waterfeld. What do you think of that, Tyler? <laughs> does that magnetically seal on the front? Yeah, of course it does. Of course it has the magnetic what? seal. Is that what it's doing? Is it magnetic? Oh, no, it doesn't have the magnetic oh, seal. Oh that's, oh, that's not magnetic. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Don't show me yours. Don't show me yours. We'll do it after we do uh, the next. Uh, okay. I, mean, I'm, okay. I know you think you got something okay. incredible. I don't okay. know if you have distressed leather. Uh, <laughs> but uh, one thing that will not stress you out, and if you are in distress right now because of your email services, DNA Mail is there to help. Oh, my God, I love DNA Mail. <laughs> Let them help you succeed in business by moving your mail to the cloud. Get their Google Apps or Microsoft Exchange hosted email services today. It's free activation check, free setup check, free 24-hour support right here in Los Angeles from people that care. They will be there for you. They're going to be there for that person in your company who's a pain in the neck and who, you know, like they, they break their email all the time and they need help. Yep. You're going to have somebody in Los Angeles helping them, uh, and it's not on your back. Or you, know, you go into the black hole of uh, you know, free email services. 99.9% .9 uptime guarantee. Don't let your business fail because you're suffering from subpar communication. Sign up today and take advantage of their 30-day free trial. You have nothing to lose. DNA Mail is the longest running advertiser on This Week in Startups. It is your geary. It is your humble duty to tweet right now. Thank you at DNAmail.com. Or thank you at DNA Mail for sponsoring This Week in Startups. Um, and uh, go ahead and thank at MailChimp as well when you do that tweet. Let's take another call. Caller number two, Al. Is Al on the line? Uh, I am. Al, I hear you. Oh, there he is. Whoa, we have you on, uh, on the, uh, whoa, okay. Uh, and so you have your trophies there from uh, high school, I see in the, in the background? No, actually, I think there's uh, at what least is that? a couple beer steins back there, so hopefully okay. there's something cool to look at. I see that, and I can see it says help, co-founder. On the wall. Correct. Okay. Yes. So uh, you're calling from the 619. Where is that? San Diego. That's ah, San Diego. That's old San Diego, down down south. Oh, is that really far yeah, down south right. in San Diego? Yeah. Uh, what's yeah. the best Mexican we can get in San Diego, please? Uh, if you go to Ocean Beach, there's a place called Tommy's Tex-Mex that is phenomenal. I haven't been there in a few months, but uh, they've got plenty of my dollars in their bank. Awesome. We will try Tommy's Tex-Mex next time we're there. We always like to get a good tip on the food. Uh, you have a question for me and Tyler. Let's hear it. Yeah, so uh, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. Uh, I've got lots of ideas, and, and I ran my own business back in 2003, 2005, uh, but shut it down because uh, it was grueling. Uh, I was the only guy running it, and I couldn't find the right co-founder to work with me and to help me get over that hump. Um, I'm a business-minded guy. I'm very technically inclined, and I've got a good marketing head on my shoulders, and I'm ready to take on that next big thing. So. Uh, whether it's my own ideas or somebody else's, it really doesn't matter. I, I'm just looking for that one plus one equals three kind of relationship with yeah. a co-founder. And so I've just kind of started my search uh, using things like Meetup and LinkedIn, Facebook, every social network you can imagine to, to varied success. Uh, and there's certainly plenty of ways to get funding once the meal's been prepared. But if you're, you're still working on that recipe or you're looking for another chef, uh, I'm having a hard time figuring out where to go. You know, where is that open founders forum or the the launch an idea conference? Uh, you know, essentially, how do I get to Jason's inner circle of talented rock star co-founders yeah. that I can start mingling with and sharing ideas? So we get this question a lot. How do I find a great co-founder? You're a business guy, marketing guy, uh, product guy. It seems you need a technical co-founder. Those are hard to uh, find. 
and um, but they're out there. And there are a lot of technical guys who say, you know what, I, want, I don't want to be the front guy. I don't want to be on This Week in Startups. I don't want to write the press releases. Um, I don't want to deal with the lawyers, et cetera. So they're out there. They're hard to find. Um, have you ever gone on a date with a girl? <laughs> of course. Yes, OK. Uh, and you know, sort of asking, where do I find a co-founder? It's like saying, where do I find a, a, uh, you know, a girl that I could go on a date with? You know, a lot of the, the women I've met you know, yeah, over the years, you, you, can you can meet them anywhere. Anything's possible, in the supermarket or at a friend's party. But you have to be out there putting out a good vibe, an authentic vibe, that you're you know, a good person, that you're excited about something, you're passionate about something, knowledgeable. And you have to circulate. I mean, that's sort of the number one rule of dating. You have to be out there, and people have to know that you're available. So what does that require? A big smile when you go out for the party, going out to the right parties. So you need to be at every technical event, every special interest group, uh, be in the valley, perhaps, because San Diego is a little bit of a wasteland. Maybe go to the colleges and look for people who are working there. Uh, even put an ad on Craigslist. I mean, people are looking for bandmates. They do that. Uh, and I would look for people who are maintaining blogs. I would look for people in the comment of Hacker News. Um, I would look for people on LinkedIn who are working at a company that's similar to the one that you think will change the world uh, and, and get them going. But it's going to be up to you to build those relationships uh, and find those people. If A lot of times, uh, co-founders find themselves when they're working at another job. So if you started doing consulting gigs, if you started working for a consulting firm, for a web shop, you might meet other people in the course of being a consultant that would then want to go off and do a project with you. I hear that all the time. Hey, we work together at Facebook, now we're doing Path. Oh, we work together at Facebook, now we're doing Quora. We work together at Google, now we're doing Red Beacon. Oh, we work together at AdBright, and now we're doing this. We work together at Google, we're doing that. I mean, it's, that's a story you hear all, all the time. And actually, you hear that in dating. We went to college together. We went to, um, uh, we worked together. A lot of people who wind up getting married. The two uh, uh, factors in uh, your spouse, you know what the two determining factors are? Uh, if you stay with them or become of, a spouse? Become a spouse. Mm, They've done time, studies. Uh, proximity? That's and correct. And duration? Frequency and proximity. Um, how often you see the person and in what proximity they are to you. Physically. Physically. So if you take the number one train, if you like a girl and she takes the number one train and she works at Sony Music, you need to work at Sony Music, you need to take number one train every day. And eventually she'll notice you and you, that's your best shot. Frequency and proximity. Not that that will cause it, but those are the correlations. So if the people who you, uh, where do the people who wind up in Y Combinator and Techstars hang out before they're in there? That's where you gotta find them. And that would be what? News.ycombinator.com. That could be Slashdot, that could be the dig comments, that could be IRC channels, all of those places. So you've got to go a step before uh, for where those uh, technical developer types are going to be, which is college, which is another startup, you know, going to mixers um, and special intergroup, and maybe even yourself starting a blog and a brand around the vertical you want to go into. So let's say it was travel. If you wanted to go into travel, uh, maybe you know you were going to start. You aspire to start Hipmunk. If you wrote a travel blog and that cool technology being made and you know and the cool features and of all the different programs, made a Twitter account that's the same. You called it you know the Travel Report, and you have the TravelReport.com or .co even better. You have the Travel Report Twitter account and the Travel Report email address and blog, and you get this thing going. Um, you might actually find out. Oh my God, Hipmunk's a good place to poach from or. Uh, wow, there's a lot of people at Kayak who now are fully vested and they don't want to be there for the IPO. I mean, maybe I can poach somebody from there. Or maybe Sidestep, which Kayak bought. Maybe those people are particularly bummed out because they lost the name, you know, they lost the sort of uh, merger wars or whatever. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the case. But that's where I would be looking. I'd be fishing in those ponds. Tyler, your thoughts? Yeah. Uh, are you familiar with the Startup Weekend? Uh, it sounds familiar, but I don't know a lot of details about it. So they did one in San Diego. They do it twice a year. They did one a couple months ago. I've been going to the ones in LA myself. I'm a, a bit, I'm very positive on startup weekends. They just did one in Tokyo last weekend, and there's a blog post in English about it at Asia Jin, which is spelled Asia J I N. Um, okay. What is J I N? J I N. The person. A person. Yeah. In Japanese, Jin means person. Yeah. Um, anyway, so Startup Week in San Diego, make sure you're at the next one. Yep. Um, and, and LA. And, and go up to the LA one or the OC one when sure. they have those. Yep. 
Uh, there's also Founders Institute is in L in San Diego. Yeah, well. it's a great place to find a founder, co-founder. Yeah, I think I just missed the boat on that one. I think it's going on right now. It is going on right now. So what now. you do is email Adeo, tell him you know me, and beg him to let you sit in there. And then show up okay. that night and yeah. say, may I sit in the back of the room, sir, and just observe? I will not make any noise or disturb anybody. But Jason Calacanis told me that this is the best way for me to become a great entrepreneur. And if you do that okay. kind of stuff and you show that kind of spirit, people will respond to it. So I don't take no for an answer. No is for the people who are losers. Uh, when you hear no, that's an opportunity for you to convince that person to say yes. So if they told you no, you can't come in, then you should come and show up and say, yeah, you know, I know normally you wouldn't let me in because it's a late registration. That's totally reasonable. But out of the ordinary, uh, perhaps I could just sit on the edge here and if there's an empty seat, I'll take it. But if there's no empty seat, I'll just stand in the back and I won't make any noise and maybe I could get coffee for you. You know, or maybe I could bring donuts every time. Is there something I could do that would just allow me to be in the room in case somebody drops out? And, kind you know, like think about it. Passion. If you hear that kind of, like, passion from a person, everybody wants to root for somebody who won't take no for an answer. Just don't be a jerk off when you do it. You know, right. there's a way to do it without being a jerk. Don't say, I'm going to stay here until, you know, you accept me. That's not the way to do it. you got to take the humble approach and say, like Kung Fu, you know, like, I'm going to sit out here in the rain until you let me in 90 days later, and then when I come in, I'm going to sweep the floors for a year. You watch Kung Fu? Sure. Grasshopper? <laughs> okay. All yeah, right. The other last piece was, um, as Jason was touching on, in most cases, and this is applies to job interviews uh, and people who get the jobs, it's something in the realm of 80% of jobs happen not through like classifieds and whatnot. It happens through some relationship or connection. Yeah. The best jobs never go on the market. Right. Uh, and even yeah. uh, when they are put on the market, they still end up happening through. Yeah. Um, same with relationships as well. It's, yeah, it's, the best girls. I'm almost, mad. It's like, you know. It's almost always through there's some connection. Oh, that was always my move. I was like, oh, wait, oh, what? She broke up with somebody? I'd be like, oh, I'd be on email, I'll call her. Hey, uh, <laughs> I heard you broke up, man. That's terrible. Why don't you come out with my friends and I? I mean, you must be bumming at home. Let's all, like, we should get coffee or something. Just talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get in there quick. But, yeah. Good girls don't stay but, on the market for my long. I, what, by saying that, what I'm suggesting is, is that you let the people that you do know let other people know that you're available because they you have the multiplier effect of getting more word out there um which is the classic dating thing as well like i am looking if you tell your friends listen i am looking for a steady girlfriend right. you know i'm tired of dating i would like to have a steady girlfriend see if i can get serious you right. know i'm at that stage in my life but forget it man they're gonna be on the horn like they have like a secret room where it's like boop, boop. <laughs> this guy's a marriage candidate boop, boop. <laughs> You know, it's like satellites. All of a sudden, this guy's ready to put a ring on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a, just like a, there's like big boards and pins going up, and they're moving like battleships. We gotta send these girls into the cafe, and they they drop their coffee, and then oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Yes. Uh, I hope that helped. Did it help? Yeah, Al? it did. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm starting some of those things that uh, that you guys had talked about, but there's definitely some additional ones in there, and I, I appreciate the. Appreciate the you know the shout out for the the founder institute and yeah. things like that. So and get up, get up to uh, I'm OC. definitely gonna gonna try that. Get up, awesome. get up to Orange County as well. There's there's a scene, a little scene going also, on. Also, if you really are sincere about it, get the hell out of San Diego. Yeah, nah, I, I'm all for you. I hope <laughs> no, no, San Diego's fine. I'm, I'm just saying if it, if you can't make it happen in San Diego, just go up to the Valley for six months and you know, you, you, there's a right. lot more going on. There's much more density. So if you're an outsider. Yeah. And there's 100 events going on a week at, there, and there's like 10 events a month going on in San Diego. It's just math to know that you got 10 times or 40 times more efficiency. So anyway, good luck with it. Keep us informed of how you do. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Cheers. I hope it's a good answer. Yeah. I try to help people, but I mean, we, we're not perfect, but we try you, to give them all the ammunition. You can't they can. always have the perfect answer, but I do have the oh. perfect bag. Let's take a look at your yes. satchel, Tyler. Because I, I recall on the last show, yeah. you talking about, you know, your bag. And, yeah, of course. And, you know. This, what do we got here? Show this, me. What this is here, this is a Tumi. Oh, Tumi, I've yeah, heard this, of it. This is Italian. Oh, is it Italian? And, and it does hold uh, the 13-inch. Oh, really? Which I know you had a problem with. Yes. Yes. I, the 13 inch didn't fit well in here. Right. I'll show you what the 13 inch look like in here, actually. If you put the, in this man bag, when you yeah. put the 13 inch in, yes. it, it, it stretches it out a little bit. So you gotta barely fit it, and then it gets the sticking out here, and yes. that's not what you want. No. So you have a bigger man bag, is what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, but it, you know, there's also some other benefits to having a Tumi bag. You have the Tumi tracker system. What? Yeah. So what is case, a Tumi tracker? In case you lose your bag, someone. What? Yeah. 
so someone can uh, call in. Oh, if found, it's if called found, that. Yes. Oh. And Toomey will come and get the bag themselves. You're kidding. No, they'll come get the bag. Wow. And this, of course, does have the magnetic seal. Yes. No zipper required. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Did you get the service manual with your bag? <laughs> You know what? I actually understand how to use the bag enough yes, that I don't need, need a service bag. Do you really need a service bag? Let me see this. No, no. You have to. Um, but let me how just much say. does it cost? How many beans? It's not so much about the cost. I'm just curious. It, it wouldn't Did matter. Did you buy it on Canal Street? Is that a fake or Let real? Let me just say, even if you knew, even if you had the means, yeah. I don't know that you could get this bag. Why not? It's only available uh -huh. if you have an international boarding pass. Oh, I see. This, you tried to buy this on the way up to... I too. tried to buy this at the store in the international duty-free section. Right, we were on uh, Virgin America. Yes. And they leave from the international airport Correct. at San Francisco. Correct. And you went to buy it. Yes. And they and said, they, I'm sorry, sir, you cannot buy this bag. With, and so then you went and found in the garbage an international no. thing? You no. flew to Paris to get it? <laughs> you more or less would have to fly to Paris to get it. You have to have an international boarding pass. They only to buy sell the bag. out at the airport for international travelers. Correct. And it's, it's not on their I, website. I contacted Toomey and I uh -huh. said, I took photos with my phone yeah. and the tags. I said, Where do I get this bag? They said, It's only sold at that location. I said, What? Honest to God, I have the tweets. And they tweeted back. I said, That's only available at that location. I said, Well, they're not going to sell it to me because I don't have an international boarding pass. They said, Well, it's sort of like a false scarcity. Uh, no, that's They're real. Creating. That's actual scarcity. No, I know, but they obviously created it for that reason. Let me see this bag. It looks like it's rugged in a cheap kind of, like, in, in, in affordable, everyman's kind of way. In a I agree. time warranty kind of way. Yes. Yeah, like if you, you know, know what it reminds me of? Yes. A lot of great bags at Walmart you can get yes. that are not expensive and they're rugged. To a, to a degree, yeah. and if you know they got run over by a, your truck or something, maybe you know. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, with something like this, if you did lose it, you'd be heartbroken. And even if you had that thing, nobody's going to call and give it back to you because this is just beautiful leather. And I'm just noticing, is this plastic? Yeah, this is a hard and just perfect plastic. There, that's reinforced. Isn't that's it? it's plastic. Plywood. Yeah, but I mean, look at the Jason, look at the look at the liner though. Can you can you find the plastic on this bag? This zippers. Oh, it's metal. Is yeah, that, is it no, that's plastic. There's, no, there's no plastic. Really? Is that no, is that one of their promises? You know, when you're buying a nice bag, if you're gonna go for the nice bag, <laughs> yeah, no plastic. You want to skip the plastic. This is what happens when guys get catty about man bags. Let's take another call. Is are you on the line? Are you suffering from this? Not yet. I mean. This is the future, though, of, I, be, I believe this is... I, I really am just disappointed about the lack of a magnetic... Uh, you know, actually, I have here. another one with the magnetic thing, and I do kind of like it. Um, but, I, you know, I have two. I have one that has the magnetic, and I like the leather. Something about it just feels like more Indiana Jones, you know? <laughs> like, yours says more Greta Garbo or something, you know? Yeah. Like, this says more Indiana Jones. This, yours says more Kate Blanchett, you know? Uh-huh. To this is more like Harrison Ford. I see what you're saying. You know, it's it's more like um, yours is more like um, <laughs> who's the tiny little one from the um, from the pirate movies? Oh, I get that. thinking Fantasy Island. No, um, you the pirate movies. I met her at this pre-Oscar party. She was know. like this tall, a little munchkin. Famous yes. actress. I'd... What was the one in the? Uh, you ever see that one? The um, Pirates of the Caribbean. Who's Kira Knightley? Kira Knightley. Your bag would be perfect for Kira Knightley. It's a very Kira Knightley esque thing. I could see her with that. <laughs> All right, is the caller on the line? Do we have a caller? Working on it, boss. Please don't yell at us like Christian Bale. Oh, good for you. You're working on it. Oh, Skype issues. Ba 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 ba. I should uh, play the uh, Christian Bell rant. I, now that you mentioned it, it is kind of Kira Knightley. We're doing audio only. Okay. No, it's beautiful. I agree. I, I think it's, an, it's. It has a silk liner. If I couldn't afford this one, I'd yeah. get that one. Yeah. It does have silk lining? Yeah. Let me see. Let me see that. It's silk. That's the, that is the most realistic faux silk I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> this is what girls do to the, each other, yeah. though, right? Isn't this yeah. true what the girls do to each other? They're like, oh, my God, that's such a great bag, and it's so affordable. And Boom, the you know? Is, yeah. They're like, you know, I thought about getting that bag, and I just thought, for the money, I can't yeah. believe what value it is. That's like, The best like, thing is you could take this anywhere, like a swap meet. Or you could, yeah. Yes. But, yeah, you know what's good about that? <laughs> yeah. If you lose it, you're yeah. not going to be worried. Right. You know, you, just, you don't have any anxiety because yeah. if... 
it gets dirty or whatever. I mean, yeah. you just throw it away. Yeah. You know, it's not like it. <laughs> and the great part about that is it just matches any outfit because, right. you know, it, it, it's, so, it's so plain in, yeah. that, in a good way, if you right. know what I'm saying. Like, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's so nondescript and it could, it's not going to clash with anything because nobody's going to notice it because it's, it's so poorly designed. Yeah. <laughs> All right, caller is ready, audio only. Uh, who do I have on the line? Uh, Partik. Partik. You're calling from the 510? Partik, who's got the better bag? Partik? Uh, I'd say the one with Jason. Ah, Partik, my man. Yeah. My man from the 510. Where this are you calling rigged. from, Partik? This is rigged. It wasn't rigged at all. Partik, have we ever talked about man bags? Say no, say no, say no. I don't know what to say. No comment on that. Thank yeah. you. Partik, where are you it. calling from? I'm calling from Hercules. Where's Hercules? It's California. Really? There's a, there's a city called Hercules, California? 20 minutes north of San Francisco. There is a Hercules. Is it next to Poseidon? <laughs> or is it south of Athena? Close, close to the water, They're close to the bay. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. It's below, it, it's northwest of Zeus. Got it. Okay, so you're calling from Hercules. Uh, Partek, you have a question for us? Let's hear it. Partik. Um, Partik, sorry. Yeah. So what was that? Uh, are, are you doing an Ask Jason or a Shark Tank? Shark Tank. Ah, Shark Tank. I love it. Uh, let's do a Shark Tank. I need more. That's what I want. 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 Okay, everybody. Uh, you know the rules, Partik. Did I get it right? Yeah. Partik. Uh, Partik, uh, you have 60 seconds. Uh, it's uh, no pressure, just 100,000 people and your entire future as an entrepreneur on the line. Uh, in three, two, one. Hey, so Half Pick Me is a freemium marketplace and developer resource that provides source codes, icons, tutorials, and everything else you need to half bake your latest idea. We're working hard to create a community of designers and developers. Users will be able to share projects, images, and links to other works and create an online portfolio. We would eventually like to expand to allow our community to sell their media items and code through our distribution network. We'll generate revenue by taking a small percentage. So why not join halfbaked.me and get all the ingredients you need for your next app? That's all. Great. Wow. 35 seconds. That was very well done. Uh, the name of the site is halfbakeme? Halfbake.me. Halfbake.me. As in like a half-baked idea. Right. Exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, it's almost a good domain name. I love the concept of half baked, but I think it needs to be baked, not bake. Uh, but I understand you went for half baked me. Interesting. Um, online portfolio part of the business. Not really that compelling. Everybody's going to have their own domain name these days. The compelling thing I did here was uh, sharing assets. So for people who are making HTML, CSS, uh, I know I do this myself when I'm looking for inspiration. I go to all these different blogs and try to find people doing interesting HTML5 things, interesting things in CSS, like the hot pot service where you flip the cards back and forth. You might find that in a library or a slider that made an image bigger and smaller. I'm constantly looking for those tiny little innovations to add to my products uh, and services uh, to make them, frankly, just you know, one or two percent better. You add five cool things like that and they're each two percent better. You got a ten percent better product overall for maybe a day or two to implement one of those things. Uh, and sharing them and building a directory of them is a great idea. Uh, I right. don't think you have to worry about taking, a per in terms of business model, while I can appreciate the fact that um, you might uh, share a percentage of the revenue with somebody selling it, I think it's better to just make it all free. And uh, there's, plenty of people, there's plenty of people who would advertise on this. And even the AdSense is going to be very high because these kind of people use tools, and these tools are expensive, and there's web hosting. So I think what I would do is I would do the layer of web hosting, the data layer, and the HTML, CSS layer, have all those different layers, and have people contributing. Uh, and maybe you could pay people to contribute stuff. Uh, or people could put a bounty out there like Challenge Post, a company I'm invested in, like make me something super sexy for this um, you know, gallery. I need, a, I need a super sexy gallery for my new site. Um, and I want it to be, you know, pretty cutting edge. Somebody come up with something, I'll give them 50 bucks or 100 bucks. It's sort of like a design competition thing. So I think you've got a good start. Um, One thing I'd like to add, if it's okay. Yeah. Um, so the part where um, the half-baked part is one other thing is that, yes, you can sell 
um, your products showed off. And like you said, yes, the online portfolio may not be something um, out of the, like it's not something uh, totally different. Um, but one thing that we think will be that matches our name as well is the half bake. You will come in with half bake ideas and we'll help you try to half bake the rest of it. And then when it comes to the users aspect to it, uh, there's let's say there's expert developers and designers. So a designer will probably know Photoshop better than Dreamweaver and a developer might know Dreamweaver better than Photoshop. Uh, so they can also swap uh, different mm. uh, resources where again that whole marketplace comes into play and will take small little bit revenue from that. So I think it'll be I a great place for professionals to trade uh, uh, different resources. Uh from the sound of it, I'm guessing that you're in high school. Yeah, I'm, I'm only 15. Okay. Um, so when we have older people on the program, we give them sort of different advice than the young people who call in. Um, I'm joking. Uh, this be, I think you're the youngest Shark Tank ever, so congratulations on that. And you did it Thank in you. record time, and it was uh, pretty uh, understandable. Um, one thing I think uh, that you should do with this project is not worry about making money. You seem to be really interested in the business model and how it makes money, I would like to give you permission to not worry mm -hmm. about making money for a second and worry about right. getting traction and getting scale and building something that's elegantly simple. Right, when right. you started expanding upon your ideas and you said something about, I help you, you help me, right. that is very powerful. So I'm looking for somebody to help me with this. I can help with that. If you just did uh, a profile card for each person, like the 37 mm -hmm. signal site of all the develop of all the um, web design shops, you don't have that sort of directory that just you scroll down. If you just did those cards that said, "I am great at HTML and CSS and HTML5, but I need help in MySQL and Cassandra and the data layer," uh, and it just matched you up with other people to do projects, so you had sort of profiles and then projects, two different objects, and you could say, "I'm willing to help you with this if you help me with that." Uh, that could be also uh, to our other caller's point a way to find founders. So I mean, even a founder database of technical founders you know, who have complementary skills, I don't know, I'm kind of liking that you know, help each other kind of thing. That, Tyler, might be, yeah. that might be something that could be added to it, yeah. but we also want to include um, something where you may not, um, like where you may not actually as much uh, interact with the person, I know it may sound weird, but actually just take the resource that they might have up for you to take. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's super simple and people posting like, hey, here's my code. That's a great starting point. I'm trying to think, wh how can you get people engaged in the product right. even right. deeper than just posting something? Tyler, what are your thoughts on the pitch? Give us your scores, Tyler. Um, the pitch, can't, you have a bit of a salesman-esque Billy Mays um, infomercial tone to it that <laughs> while being brief, uh, it was a little fast. You could have slowed down. Could have slowed down, 10%. Yeah, you don't. You you were selling it a little hard. A little bit of a hard sell. Yeah. You were very excited. Yes. Maybe the excitement was, comes across inauthentically. Yes. If you're too excited, so if the excitement is not uh, commensurate with the actual true excitement you have, right. it, it can come across exactly. as inauthentic. Exactly. Which is the which is the epitome of an infomercial. So you want to maybe bring it back 10, 15, 20 percent. But keep going, Tyler. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Okay. So, but that's on the pitch part. Yeah. That's easily fixable. Yeah. Pitches are easily fixable. Products are not as easy. Right. Yeah. The idea. <laughs> yes. Um, so what do you think of the idea? Idea-wise, I think it's a bit um, ambitious. Uh, yeah. That's that's a huge undertaking for anybody to sure. kind of pull up. You're going in. I like the the novelty of it. The yep. kind of newness, and I think it could work. If that's just a hell of a big first project to do. Right. Um, One for, thing, if I could add. Yeah. Um, the as I said, like my pitch, like we're still working on the community part right now, um, being that our school is in the way mostly. Um, we're just taking it slow and that we're just planning to just start off with a nice resource with free tutorials and some, maybe just some resources that people could take or buy, whatever it is. Yeah. But the part where I think you guys are thinking it's ambitious is where we're starting to get social, where designers and developers are starting to exchange. Mm -hmm. I think that, as I might agree, that it is a little bit ambitious and it's something that is in the future. Okay, that's your phase two. Okay. I'm going to say so, so, But when you pitch those things, I would suggest 
Um, say, say that. Say that. Yeah, yeah. Fa- that could have been your last 20 seconds or 15 right. seconds. It's good to end early, but 25 seconds might be a little too early. Because somebody's going to think, like, wow, like, you know, you, you've got full-time school to deal with. How, you know, how are you going to pull this yeah, off? Yeah, phase one, share the resources. Phase two, right. we're going to figure out a way for you to socialize with each other, to collaborate deeper. I'm going to give your pitch a seven. Um, for a 15-year-old, I'd give you, like, a 10. But I'm not going to grade you as a 15-year-old because you're old enough to listen to the show. Yeah, you're don't. old enough to build a business. You don't want to be graded as a kid, do you? No, I don't. I want to so be graded like adult. an adult. I'm giving you the adult grade. It would have been a 7. I Thank think you. If, you, if you take Tyler's advice and throttle back to Billy Mays and your enthusiasm to a more realistic level, you could get above an 8, which is fantastic. Now, on the idea, I think you have an 8 idea. It's tr- tremendously ambitious. Um, and I th- you didn't articulate the wow in it. There wasn't like a wow moment. You didn't articulate uh, a problem that you personally had, some frustration, which is always good. Um, you didn't articulate the size of the market. You didn't articulate a competitor. There were so many things you could have articulated to make the idea seem as robust as it actually is. I know this is a robust idea because I know uh, how developers struggle yeah. to find good resources. Especially cash. It seems like you're really focusing on cash strapped developers. Yeah, maybe people who are alone, too. Right. You know, people who are lone wolves. Yes. You know, this is not somebody working at Google or Facebook where they got a million people they can go talk to. This is somebody working at home or a small project or a medium-sized project. Right. And anything. So what are your scores, Tyler? Give us your scores. Um, I gave seven, eight. Yeah, I'm... Be honest. The, he, yeah, no, the, he wants I, the, the real pitch thing. is low seven, high six, so I can put it at a seven. You say 6.5, maybe. I could 6. say 6.75. 6. 6. 6. I could 5. say 7.5. I could say 6. 7. it's 5. easily rectifiable. Yeah. All right. Um, the idea wise, seven, seven, five, seven, five. Yeah. I mean, it could be, I, it could easily be changed into an eight, five, nine. If, if it was articulated if, better. Correct. Right. Right. So listen, like you bottom said, with, line. with defining the problem better, defining the market better and. The bottom line I'm going to give you right now is you're in the top half of the class and you're 15 years old. Most of the people on the show would have scores right around yours or even a little lower. So I think you're right in the middle of the bell curve, which I, I is a wish, great thing for 15. I, I wish I had what you had going on Thank at you. 15. Yeah. All right. Well, when you have this ready, show it to me. I'll take a look. You know how to get me. Jason at Mahalo. Right. All right, my Thank friend. You, you did well. Good job. Thank you. It was a Herculean effort. <laughs> what? You had to throw that in there. Because, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we're going to do one more call. Is that right? Or do we do them all now? I can't remember. I, my memory's shot. You know, I was up with the baby. Ugh, so much stuff. You know, I ate so much turkey yesterday. Already? Yeah. Black, it's Black yeah, Friday. Black Friday. Today's Black Friday. Yeah. Why, are, why are we not out shopping for the crazy We're deal? taping this, Tyler. <laughs> we're pretending that we're here on a Friday. Sorry, I was busy thinking about my bag. It's, All right. It's, so, uh, we're, yeah, your bag. Yes. Uh, while we're setting up the last call, Tyler, oh. things that you're thankful for looking back over the last year? Uh, this show. This show is particularly. Yes. Why? Do we not have that soundboard anymore? Yeah, where is the, can we get the, uh, like, melancholy, you know, emotional music that makes Tyler cry? Yeah. Uh, Tyler, tell me, tell us why you're thankful for the show. Um, what is it specifically? Yeah, it's, it's helpful. It's, it's helpful to me, and it's fun helping others. Yeah. Yeah. What have you learned? Anything stick out this year? Wow. Because um, I just, I can rattle through the guests. I mean, if you just go yeah. guest by guest. It's, exactly. It's a lot of there's a, There's always a gem in each episode, which I think is why people keep coming back. Yeah. And it's why anyone who starts, they're forced to go back. Right. I, I almost feel bad for anyone who learns about the show now. <laughs> it is a bit of a burden because uh, you get so many good nuggets. 95 episodes, yeah. Yeah, and I think for me the thing I'm really thankful for is, uh, gee, what a great team putting it together. Because I get a lot of the credit, obviously, because I'm the host, but you've done an amazing job, and thank you for that. Lon uh, and Kathy uh, for helping out, Mark Thompson even. Uh, and also the crew, amazing job. Uh, the show's been flawless, and, you know, uh, doing this when we did we, we did Calacanis cast just me and you I mean mm-hmm. it was hard yeah two guys just trying to make this happen it was a lot of work and that was yeah. audio only yeah. I mean some of those tapes are classic I mean yeah. we gotta get those and re-release them at some point um, but man I'm thankful for the team I have around me especially Mahalo uh, your help on Mahalo all those all these years this weekend what a great team around me there uh, and even the event business with Crute and Open Angel Forum and all the chapter heads I mean really you can define uh, a person's success I believe by the quality of the people around them. And I've never had this caliber of uh, people around me in my whole career. So I'm very thankful for it. Let's take a call. 
They didn't even have the sentimental music on. I was going to start crying. Okay, we have a caller on the line. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Uh, Jason? I am great. I am great. Uh, and uh, tell us your name. Uh, my name is Michael from New Jersey. Mike from New Jersey. Michael from yes, New Jersey. Mike is, Mike is perfect. Mike from Jersey. Um, uh, what exit on the uh, throughway there? The turnpike? Uh, 142. 142. Okay. Where is that? Off the, uh, gar off the Garden State. Near uh, Morris, Morris County. Oh, okay. Like 40 minutes outside of Manhattan. Yeah, you're a little bit north, right? Yep. North of the old uh, Meadowlands, uh, near Ridgewood, New Jersey. Right near Ridgewood. I used to uh, go to Ridgewood, New Jersey for a week every summer and go Very to cool. Graydon Pool, if you know that. Do um, not know it. Uh, it's like this big public pool. We used to go to my cousins there. Uh, it was like a uh, city. We would go, the, the kids from Brooklyn would go to Jersey. The kids from Jersey would come to Brooklyn for a week every summer. Right. It was exchange great. program. It was like an exchange program. We basically went yeah. across the Hudson. Um, <laughs> so uh, you have a question for us. Let's hear it. Yeah, so um, my team and I have been developing a social website that mm. has a little more focus on video and exists pretty much entirely under content that we self-produce. So basically, uh, the self-produced content is hand-cranking our social network. So with you know, the nature of a startup like the one I just described, you know, that relies on lightings and lighting and microphones and space, kind of like this weekend, uh, how do you go about raising capital for a content-based project with no traction? Okay, uh, the first thing you're going to need, well, there's a couple things. Right, um, right off the bat, uh, you're on to something. YouTube is Google's best social network. Mm -hmm. um, and nice. their second best social network is, of course, of course Gmail, right? Yep. Uh, these are two fabulous social networks, but YouTube is actually a more robust one. People follow each other, and the number of subscribers you have to your channel, every account has a channel. The number of subscribers you have to your channel drives your SEO within the YouTube search engines mm -hmm. um, and comments and thumbs up, uh, you know, threaded comments. There's a million different ways in which Google looks at socialization on YouTube for the quality of the video and where to rank it. And if you have that stuff going on, you go right to the top. That's why people like iJustine uh, or Fred, I mean, these people have a million views for everything. It's not because their videos are necessarily so good. They're, they're good, but there are higher quality videos, they would admit. It's that right. they, their videos are socialized in a much deeper way, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and people respond to them. So Fred's just a kid talking with a squeal, but it gets people to comment and subscribe and rate it. And that's why right. in all the videos, when we do them at Mahalo or other people, we say, make sure to comment, rate, and subscribe to our videos. Thank you for doing so, blah, blah, blah. So you are on to something there. Now, you want to raise money. If you're going to try mm -hmm. to raise well, money... I think, I think with the nature of, you know, we want to produce our own content, you know, starting out. So, you know, I think, you know, you would have to have money on the front end. It depends the nature of the content. So um, right. if, you producing, if you are producing narrative content, like a not. show, you're not. Right. Okay. No. Because if you're doing that, what you need to do is find a rich media company or a rich individual, put all their money in the middle of the street, and light it on fire. Right. Because that's the history of making <laughs> narrative stuff online from, yeah, Ameri like, from American no. Cybercasting on. This stuff is not made money. I agree. Um, I think it's it, a market that has yet to evolve. Yes. And also a market that does not need to evolve because when you have The Walking Dead on AMC, Breaking Bad on AMC, Boardwalk Empire on HBO, the, right. the world know, does somebody... not need narrative from a bunch of knuckleheads on the web. Right. The webisode model is not ever going to work. D-O-A. Right. Correct. So, Mike, 100%. You, you're, you obviously know what you're talking about. Now, right. um, there are some things that do work very well on the web, like short videos on how to make apple pie or how to brine a turkey. If you type how to brine a turkey into Google or YouTube, you will see a great Mahalo video we shot a month ago. Uh, and that's got 20,000 views, and that makes us whatever, 3 or $4 per thousand, or 2 or $3, whatever it is, makes right. 100 bucks. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, short videos work, uh, short funny video, short helpful videos work, short funny videos work. Um, a talk show like this one obviously works, podcasting works, um, uh, niche content works. So there, there, there are ways to do it, but if you want to raise money for these kind of things, you have to find somebody, a VC or angel, who's comfortable with what the return will be on right. uh, this kind of investment. So, for example, with This Week In, we raised money at a $1 million post. We raised $300,000 for 30%. I don't know if I've ever told this stuff publicly, but I put in $100,000, Matt Coffin put in $100,000, and Sky Dayton put $100,000 in. Um, right. Not a big deal for those two guys. You know, I'm not insignificant for me, but uh, you know, not, uh, you know, I'm not crying about it or I'm not going to miss it. Um, so. We had to put it at a low valuation to get those kind of people interested because 
I say, when I'm investing money, I would like to make a 10, 20, 30x return, or at least have the chance. Right. I believe that this weekend could become worth 10 to $30 million quite easily, because I built weblogs into $30 million. So my mm -hmm. logic was, if I ask for a small amount of money on a million dollars, they'll be able to see what I see, which is, this could potentially be 10 to 30x for them. Perhaps right. more if it becomes a phenomenon. Um, now, if I had asked for five, $10 million with only two shows, Kevin Pollock's and mine, I wouldn't have got it. However, now that we have 23 shows and about a million dollars a year in revenue, a $5 million valuation on this business is totally reasonable, right? right. Five times revenue, it's growing, it's uh, got technical prowess, it's got 12 people, it's break even, it could be profitable if we wanted it to be. So, you know, you, you basically could raise a small amount of money from angels, get them uh, salivating at the low valuation, and mm -hmm. then you could make it up in the next valuation when you prove your points, uh, and you, you, you just have to uh, appropriately uh, price it. Now, I've turned down three or four content sites in the last two months who wanted me to invest and who, frankly, I would love to have invested in, but they had $6 million valuations, and I said to them, Tree Hugger sold for 10. You're raising at six. Right. Am I going to invest in this and make as much as I'm, you know, I'm going to take massive risk, I'm going to invest in this and get a $10 million exit? Uh, you know, I, there's no return. I could make more money in the stock market or in bonds or whatever and take no risk or less risk, in, obviously, risk in stock market, but no risk in the bonds. So you just have to appropriately price it and you have to find people who are, who trust you and who are passionate about that space. Um, and uh, those would be people in the blogging or magazine world who have right. the entrepreneurial in them. So I think there's, there, there were a, a group of magazine people who have made money, like the people who made uh, Details Magazine, that was a startup magazine that made money, et cetera, when it got sold. Um, so maybe some of those old school people from New York would be into it. Um, and then there's also the incubators. And you can present, also how you present it is critical. So I would not say to people you're making content. I would say you're making a social network and that you use content for your SEO strategy and your marketing strategy. And that's monetized marketing for you. Right, uh, but I mean, the fact is, is that you know our social network is is driven by the content handed down by it's driven by the content we create more or less. Correct. So the so what we're doing is we're enc encouraging user interaction, you know, with our content and then increasing user user interaction. So right. you know, so it's you know, for it's your own bias, it's your own worldview that makes you want right. to call it content. What right. you have to do is, is unlearn. Which I'm to. Yeah, you have to unlearn what you have learned and say, I'm not making content, I am making a social network where users contribute. It's UGC, and you have to phone it in and fake it with these investors and say, no, this is going to scale. It's UGC, UGC, right. like Facebook, like YouTube, like Twitter, like Tumblr, oh, and just pick like the shit. It's a sellout, though. No, yeah, listen. That's if the you, game, though, huh? It's not selling out, all right? If, uh, let me, I'm gonna think of an analogy here, hopefully one that doesn't get me into too much trouble. But if you and your girl went to the botanical gardens and she said, what do you think of the flowers? And you actually think, God, these flowers are amazingly boring. I'd rather be watching the Knicks game. Mm -hmm. Should you say that? Or should you say, no, sweetheart, true. sweetheart, these are the most beautiful tulips I've ever seen. I could walk for miles around these tulips with you. Maybe we should sit and take a photo so we can capture this moment. Right. Well, that does, doesn't that you know beg the question? Um, you know, what kind of money should I be taking? Should I be taking money from people begging to find, get a million users in a social network, or should I find pe money from people who are genuinely excited and you know this yeah. innovative content that we've created okay. and, and an innovative forum for it? All right. So now you're getting back to you again. You want right, to get credit. You, will, you want to yeah, get credit for interactive content. You want them to respect your vision. You know what? They respect your vision when your vision deserves to be respected and you've proven it. So don't worry in the beginning. Just get them in and get them excited and speak their language. And if their language is, I don't subscribe, I do not invest in content, then don't sell them content. You know? Uh, sell them a human powered search engine. I'm not saying I would do this, but. You know, <laughs> Mahalo was a human-powered so search engine. Hundred thousand dollars on lights and a camera, like well, not yeah, whatever. You know, so you just tell them like, hey, we're kickstarting it. We're seeding the community. Just say we're right. seeding the community. My point is, you you're not lying. You're just moving the emphasis to the socialization, which you freely admit is how this is going to work. You're just moving the spotlight of uh -huh. what's there. You know, just, just move. Zuckerberg didn't go to people and say, I'm making a photo sharing site, even right, though that's know. half the traffic. If you went to them and said, I make a photo sharing site, they give them the valuation of a photo sharing site. They say, oh, well, Flickr got $30 million from Yahoo or $25 million. Uh, we'll give you 50 since it's you know, so much bigger. 
He said, I'm building a social network that is going to be the largest site in the world. And he didn't say it was going to be a directory like LinkedIn, because they would have lowered his valuation, even though that's got a pretty solid valuation. He didn't say I was going to make a casual gaming site. I mean, two-thirds of the traffic on Facebook is probably photos and casual games. He didn't say right. I'm making you know, um, casual games and a photo-sharing site. They would have kicked him out of the office. So you have to learn to speak the language. And forget about what you have to... You have to put yourself in the perspective of you, the people you want to raise money from. And mm -hmm. they, they want to, they've seen certain movies, they come with some bias, understand what makes them tick, understand what has worked for them in the past, and sell them that. But don't sell them that which they are not interested in. And this doesn't, right. this doesn't stop after the angel round or A round even. It's like Twitter gets to C round, D round, and they're still, now they're saying it's the information network. You know, it's, there's, you're still constantly selling... It's the all semantics. You're selling the next level. If they called Twitter a blogging platform, they would not be getting DST to invest at $3 billion right. or I whatever mean, it's right. going to wind up being. Right. They're saying this is the, this is the fire hose of the, the pulse right. of the... I, I, are they describing it any kind of... No, in for, they're saying, in, in, which is, I think, very accurate, and I think they're being very the, the genuine. Infosphere? No, the information network. It's the information network, yes. Yeah. So that's the social network, this is the information network. Correct. This is, yeah, so whatever. And by um, doing that, they're right, very, so very clever. So if I'm sitting in a room with an investor and he goes, all right, what are you doing? I go, all right, I'm making a social network that is leaning towards video. And he goes, YouTube, get the hell out of my office, you know? No, no, you say, you, what I would say is, YouTube's been a tremendous success. It hasn't advanced since Google's bought it in any major right, way. Agreed. And right. we think that we can build the next generation and YouTube, Facebook, the same way YouTube made the next generation Facebook iClips. doesn't seem to be wanting to do video. Yeah, and Facebook's not focused on it, and, and we think there's an opportunity them, here. you sell them on the imagination of, what if, you know, what if Facebook was doing video and you took the, the social implications of... Yeah, and what if Facebook, what, what if YouTube had remained an independent company was still innovating today on the base of videos they have? Um, mm -hmm. You know, and the good news is, because YouTube exists, it's validated the space, and you know Microsoft and Facebook, and News Corp, and Yahoo, and AOL, and right on that line, are all going to be interested in buying video assets. And video right. assets have a nice, long history of getting bought out, and raising money, and you know, whatever. I mean, Brightcove, and this, and that, Truvio. You can give them the whole list of all the different video innovations that have been bought, and the sustainable ones, like Blip, which seems to be sustainable, right. uh, Tube Mogul, which seems to be sustainable. Uh, Vimeo, which seems to be sustainable. So you can say, like, you know, there are people made a bunch of mistakes in the YouTube era trying to chase them. What we're trying to do is innovate on top of them, uh, innovate around them in areas that they're not focused on, and look at all these sustainable businesses here. Uh, and yeah, we're going to, you don't have to bring up that you're making content. That just could be part of what you do. You may even. Right, so, do, so do bring that up. Do, do highlight that, that that's, that's, you know, part of it. It's also, you know, important to me as an entrepreneur because that's, that's an area I want to enter. Yeah. But I guess that's irrelevant for raising money, right? Yeah, I mean, you, like I said, when you're going to the gardens with your girl yeah. and she loves the flowers, I mean, are you going to ruin the experience for her by telling her I'm bored out of my skull? Or are you going to just go with the flow a little bit? All right. Sometimes you've got to go with the flow a little bit. I'm not saying lie. The gray line slash flow? You just, just gotta, you got to work <laughs> with what, the, the, everything's in a certain context, you know? Right. If you go to a French restaurant and they, and they serve you some dish and the chef says, oh my God, I made you this complimentary dish, it's the greatest thing ever, and it's a little amuse-bouge, and you eat it, and it's not to your liking, and the chef says, what do you think? You say, oh, thank you so much. You don't say, right. actually, I thought it was bland, and uh, the texture kind of sucked. You, right. know, you know, it's not your place, and what, is it, what good does it do him or you? You know, you're never going to see this guy again. You're in France, you had the amuse-bouge, you, you ate it already, it's over. I, this no, makes I, no, I don't I know if this that. makes any sense, but I hope it does. No, it does make it makes. I mean, it makes plenty of sense. I mean, effectively, what you're saying is just try and kick down the door by saying, screaming "social network" as many times as I can, and then raise money, and then try and you I'm know, not, yeah. spin it, spin it my way. You know, once once we raise it. But you know, can you just walk into, you know, can, are angels, you know, not dumb enough, but are they like deer in headlights when you just start saying "social network"? They just start smiling like I can't no. They might, it might be the opposite. I would say they're very sophisticated. Um, even right. though there's a little I mean, bit of a bubble right now, they're sophisticated. So they're going to judge you not on these, this buzzword bingo, which you're a little bit obsessed about, which I understand, because uh, you're, I'm guessing in New Jersey, you're a little bit outside of this whole bubble, so you're looking in, it's a little bit distorted, and you're, you're playing the buzzword bingo, and you're assuming they're gonna play it. That's not what they're gonna do. They're gonna look at it and say, is this the right guy with the right team in the right market, and are they executing well? And uh -huh. if they go, this guy's hungry, 
He's got a team that's hungry and is qualified. He's in the right market. There's plenty of money here. And look at his innovation so far. Great domain name, great logo, great user interface, great technology. It's built to scale. He's using Cassandra. He's got the latest stuff. He understands the 17 features that YouTube have done well, but the 16 that they haven't done yet and that will probably be on their roadmap. And he's already built four of them, and he's built them in a very elegant way. They're going to look at who you are, right. who you have around that you, seems the market. That I once thought. That's thought it. it was going it's to be. all about... In, today, in this day and age, in the Y Combinator age, in the age of people building stuff without, before, there are people building stuff before they get to the angels. Right. Everybody looks, nobody invests in an idea anymore. Nobody invests in a business plan anymore. They look at what you built. Even if it's just five mock-ups, even if it's just a, you know, three-button iPhone app. And if it makes them mm -hmm. smile, if it makes them go wow, if it makes them go, I see potential, then they'll write the check. And this is why yeah, I tell I mean, everybody yeah. I'm well, on we've the phone. we got all that. That's then you exciting. should you're going to be fine. And I I basically tell every, everybody on the phone's like, hey, can we show you our deck? And I say, listen, you can show me the deck if you think it's really important. However, I have never made an investment based on a deck, or a business plan, or projections. You can show so them the to me, like a deck. A deck is like a PowerPoint presentation. Oh, okay. yeah. So they call it a deck. It's just industry slide. slides. Slides. It's called a deck of slides, right? But they say deck. right. Exactly. So I say if we got 20 minutes, if you want to spend the time showing me a deck. And projections, projections and your market research, okay, but I will make the decision based on your product and product execution only. That, and you know, oh. who you are as well, but that, that's aside from the fact. It's going to be based on how you've executed on the product. If I don't see product excellence, when you come to me asking for an investment, well, but what am I going to see after I give you the money? Is it all of a sudden you're going to become a great product person after you have twenty-five dollars or $50,000 of my money in your bank account? It's going to overnight, right. you, all of a sudden you can know how to pick a domain name? I pick great domain names and I pay ten bucks for them or five hundred bucks for them, or people can buy them on Sedo or Sado, whatever right, it's called. Right, right. You know? So there are things that I don't think you need money um, to actually uh, accomplish, and that's what people yeah, are we looking have a website, at. We're branded. We just I was thinking I was going to have to shoot a pilot or something crazy it was like twenty minutes ago, but I guess not. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. All right. A small proof, small proof of concept. Small proof of concept. And when you know what, email it to me. I'll take a look at it. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Great. Cheers. Now we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Changing lives. Okay. I, think, I thought he said changing lines, lanes, and then I realized he said changing lives. Well, that's very nice. Um, this has been a great program. We've gone on for far too long. Um, thanks to Tyler for showing his uh, man bag. Very nice by Toomey. Toomey's not a Hopefully sponsor. Was, I hope it wasn't too painful. I, you would know. So I'll let you be determined. I mean, you tell me how you feel over the weekend. Okay. If you're, if you're, if you're crushed, I'll buy you one of these Waterfelds. <laughs> Thank you to War You know, Waterfeld didn't even send this complimentary. I bought it. And I, I, usually I get everything for free because I can tweet it and they'll send it to me for free. But I just, I don't like asking people. I just, I just buy it. But if Waterfield, if somebody wants to tell Waterfield that Tyler wants one of these, 902 Colorado, <laughs> Santa Monica 90401. Is it 90401? Is that right? 90401. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just send it to care of. Tyler uh, with the inferior Toomey bag. Uh, and if Toomey wants to sponsor the program, I love Toomey. Uh, thank you to <laughs> at uh, DNA Mail. Thank you to at MailChimp. And of course, SendGrid and everybody, Storm on Demand, the team here, Shark Tank uh, participants. What a great show. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week on This Week in Startups. That's what it's all about, man. They said, money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people We ain't gonna live like equals Until we get the money, spend the money and defeat you Money is the root of all evil Funny how it feeds my people We ain't gonna live like equals Until we get the money, spend the money and defeat you